I know most of you know that one thing you will often see on maps are latitude and longitude, um, but I find many people, although they're familiar with those words, don't really understand uh, what latitude and longitude are or why they are, me why they are measured in things like degrees. So let's look at them with some more detail. Because topographic maps are drawn with great accuracy, one of their most useful functions is determining the precise location of features on the Earth's surface. Two methods that are frequently used are latitude and longitude, and the second method is the public land survey system. In this video, we're going to talk about latitude and longitude. The next video, we'll discuss the land survey system or the public land survey system. Latitude is the distance north or south of the equator. The latitude lines are in red on this picture. Uh, latitude lines run east or west, but they measure how far you are north or south. The equator is a latitude line, and all other latitude lines are parallel to the equator. Sometimes I remember latitude are like the rungs of a ladder, right? You'd step on these as you were climbing like a ladder. Um, if you're curious about, well, how do they measure how far north or south if they run east and west? The zero latitude is the equator, and if you went to, say, um, 30 north latitude, 10, 20, 30, if you said, I'm on 30 north latitude, you could be anywhere on this line. It doesn't tell you how far east or west you are. It only tells you how far north of the equator you are. And that's why latitude lines run east and west, but they measure how far you are north or south of the equator. Latitude is measured in angles from the center of the Earth. So you maybe have heard people say 45 degrees north latitude. Well, why do they use degrees? Normally, degrees are used to measure angles, and in latitude, they are also used to measure an angle. You're actually measuring an angle between the equator, the center of the Earth, and your point on the surface of the Earth, wherever it is. You're measuring the angle between those three points, and that's why latitudes and longitudes are reported in degrees. The lines of latitude are also called parallels because they're parallel, they never cross each other. Places north of the equator are designated with an N for north latitude, and those south of the equator are designated with an S for south latitude. Longitude is the distance away from the prime meridian, and the prime meridian is the zero degree longitude. Um, the equator is a logical choice for measuring north and south because it splits um, the Earth in half with respect to its spin poles. Um, that's not true for the longitude. The longitude is arbitrary. You could really put it any place, and any place would make as much sense as any other place. And in fact, um, many different places have called their own location the, the position of the prime meridian throughout history. Um, in the United States, it, was, it has been drawn through New York, Philadelphia, and even Hartford, Connecticut. Um, you can imagine that gets really complicated. If this is zero, and then some other maps this is zero, and then some other maps this, this is zero, and you want to make a measurement here, not only do you need to know the degrees, but you also have to know the degrees from which longitude line you're talking about, which, which prime meridian. Um, the ancient Greeks designed the systems of parallels and meridians. Uh, Claudius Ptolemy, about 150 AD, used a line through the Canary Islands as the prime meridian. And on many ancient maps, we find longitudes given from Pharaoh, the westernmost island of the Canaries. So the point there is that throughout history, it's been in a lot of different places. And in 1884, an international agreement, uh, the meridian that passes through the Greenwich Observatory near London, England, was agreed on by the rest of the world pretty much to be the zero degree longitude that would always be used. And it's not so much that people wanted to let England have it, I think, so, so much as you put the zero longitude through Greenwich, England, what happens is the opposite side, the 180 degrees, 
then passes through the Pacific Ocean and doesn't cross very many land masses. So it gives you an obvious place to put the international dateline. Um, this meridian that goes through Greenwich, England is sometimes referred to as the Greenwich Meridian, or the Prime Meridian. It's used almost universally as the beginning point from which all longitudes are measured. Longitude is also given as a degree angle measurement, and much in the same way that latitude is measuring an angle, longitude is also measuring an angle. It's an angle between um, the prime meridian, the center of the Earth, and then the point that you're interested in. So you're measuring the degree angle um, between the prime meridian, the point you're interested in, and the center of the Earth. That's the angle that you're measuring when you report in degrees. The lines of longitude are also called meridians. And the places east of the meridian are designated with a E for east longitude. And the places west of the prime meridian are designated with a W for west longitude. Um, notice there's a difference between the maximum latitude and longitude you could have. If this is zero, the greatest longitude measurement you could make is halfway around the Earth. Um, there's 360 degrees in an entire circle, so halfway around would be 180 degrees. So you could have 180 degrees east longitude or 180 degrees west longitude. Actually, 180 degrees east and west would be the same line. Uh, the latitude, if you remember, only went up to what? It only went up to 90 degrees because from the equator to the center of the Earth to the point at the top or bottom of the surface of the Earth, the pole, that's a 90 degree measurement and you can't really have more than that. Notice that meridians are not parallel. They actually all touch at the pole. They haven't drawn the line all the way, but that line continues and every longitude touches the North Pole and every longitude touches the South Pole. And so at the pole, longitude is actually meaningless. It doesn't tell us anything. So the zero, zero mark where latitude and longitude uh, are both zero is right here in this little kind of indentation underneath Africa. And latitude and longitude are much like a game of battleship. You know how when you play the game battleship, you'd say, B6, and you find B, and you find 6, and you trace them both over, and you look where they intercept. Uh, that's pretty much what you do with latitude and longitude. You tell um, 30 degrees south latitude, so that brings you here, you know you're somewhere on this line. And then if you were 30 degrees south latitude, uh, 20 degrees west longitude, you'd have to go, okay, where on this line am I? 20 degrees west longitude, I am right there. That's the point that I'm interested in. That's how we use latitude and longitude. If we zoom into a smaller area, um, a 10 by 10 degree area, you can imagine that a degree is a pretty big measure. And so uh, we need to measure more carefully than that. And so each degree is divided up into 60 equal parts. And those are each called a minute and then each minute is divided into 60 equal parts called a second. So if I were to just choose a point here where my red cross is right there, right? Watch down here the latitude and longitude line. Um, it's telling me I'm at 42 degrees, 6 minutes, and 57 seconds north. And I'm at 5 degrees, 2 minutes, and 37 seconds east longitude. And as I move north, you can see that my latitude gets bigger, but my longitude doesn't change very much. And I go, my minutes get bigger, and as they approach 60, eventually when I get to 60 minutes, I'll flip over to the next degree mark. And you see the difference there? And then if I wanted to show longitude, I'm going to move to the east, and I can see my minute measurements get bigger, bigger, bigger. And as I approach 60, eventually I'll move to the 6 degree.
longitude, or six degrees east longitude. So that's how we divide latitude and longitude up into smaller increments than just a degree, because a degree is a pretty big, a pretty big amount of space on the surface of the Earth. On a topographic map, latitudes and longitudes are shown at the four corners. And you can always tell that this is latitude and longitude because it's got degrees and minutes. Uh, degrees and minutes. These other things that you'll see um, with, with numbers and little m's and um, e's on them, those are UTM coordinates, or if they're in red, they're in their uh, public land survey coordinates. When we want latitude and longitude, make sure you look at the corners and look for the symbols of degrees and the symbols of minutes. So each corner is going to give its latitude and its longitude. The 38 minutes 15 or 38 degrees 15 minutes is this top line. So that's a latitude. And the 104 degrees 37 minutes 30 seconds is this line along the side that's a longitude. So every corner is going to be marked like that in a USGS topographic map. And occasionally at intervals along the top. Now notice they only put 42 minutes 30 seconds. How come they didn't mark the degree? Well, they didn't mark the degree because this is a seven and a half minute map. If we looked carefully up in the corner here, it's a seven and a half minute quadrangle. So this map is only, is covering less than a degree, far less than a degree. It's only covering seven and a half minutes of a degree. And so whatever the degrees were in the corners, that's the degrees along the entire edge of the map. So to know if you're looking at latitude and longitude, you just look for degrees or minutes and seconds. Might not even see degrees if you're not in the corners. You might just see minutes and seconds. All right, so that's it for latitude and longitude. And in the next video, we'll talk about the public land survey system.